Welcome to another API Spotlight. The goal of this video is to cover the Jackson DataBind API. This API provides facilities to create JSON serialization code quickly and painlessly. To do this, it leverages Java annotations and reflection to guess at the correct method of serialization for your code. Here you can see an example customer class that we wish to serialize to JSON. We are following basic POJO principles when creating the class, including setters and getters for each of the properties. This class can be serialized using the object mapper class that Jackson provides us. Here we are reading a customer from the provided text and then writing it back to standard out. When we run the program, you can see that we get the same value out that we put in, plus or minus any white space changes. This is due to the fact that Jackson will use reflection to look at each of the getters and setters names and use those to store the properties from the JSON object. This works most of the time, but sometimes we may choose to overwrite this behavior at the property level. To facilitate this, Jackson provides us with countless annotations to customize the serialization behavior. The most common annotations you will use are probably the JSON getter and JSON setter annotations. These can be used to rename the property in the JSON payload that is both parsed and serialized to. Typically, you can name the property based on the field inside the JSON, but sometimes the property you need doesn't follow the Java naming conventions. In this case, you can override Jackson's behavior with these annotations. Here you can see we have a first and last name property and an agent years property. These correlate to the text that is displayed inside the JSON object and then get serialized into the properties that we have in the code. Further, you can bypass using getters and setters altogether if you so choose by using the JSON auto detect annotation. Setting this to allow any visibility allows Jackson to access private fields in your class. As we're using a single field now, we can merge the JSON getter and JSON setter annotations together into a single JSON property annotation that Jackson provides. These annotations, while helpful, don't paint the full picture of the configuration that Jackson allows. Jackson further allows use site customization of serialization behavior through its object mapper features. This can be done by calling the configure method on the object mapper, along with the feature, and if it should be enabled or disabled as parameters. These are some of the more common features that can be used with an object mapper. Fail on unknown properties allows configuring if properties not declared in the Java classes will be ignored instead of throwing an exception at runtime. Fail on null primitives allows configuring if null value should be parsed to the default primitive value for a primitive type in the case that a null value comes through. In this case, age and years is returning null in the JSON. This would be parsed as a zero if it was a primitive value inside the class. Fail on numbers for enums allows configuring if the ordinal number for an enum can be used instead of a string representation of the enum inside a JSON payload. If you want to learn more about what annotations and features Jackson provides, there are links provided in the description below. If you found the information helpful and want to see more videos in the future, please comment down below on which APIs you want covered in future videos. Thank you.